In this lesson, you will learn how to migrate data from the desktop to the web using Microsoft Access. Access can create two types of databases. Desktop databases are the traditional type and have been around for more than 20 years. They have great power. You can now also create web databases, which are called Access Apps. Access Apps run in a browser. In moving data, from the desktop to the web, the main thing to do is to define relationships between tables in a way that web databases can understand. Access apps need relationships defined with lookup fields. With an Office 365 package that includes SharePoint hosting, many of you could web-enable features of your desktop access databases. I'm going to show you how to modify structures for the web and move the data. Hi, this is Crystal. First, we will make a blank desktop database. We will then import table structures and change them. Then, we will link to the tables with data from the new database. We will create and run append queries to put data into the new structure. Because I'm going to make some mistakes, update queries will be used to make changes after the data is populated. Finally, we will create a custom access app and import tables from the desktop database. This is the relationships diagram of the data we are going to move. It comes from my free contacts database, which can be downloaded from the tips page of msaccessgurus.com. Create a new blank desktop database. When I create a new database, there are defaults I like to change for the current database. Click File, Options, and choose Current Database from the left sidebar. Notice this is where you can set an application title and choose an application icon. I usually set the document window to Overlapping Windows. I also uncheck Perform Name Autocorrect and save the options. Getting the autocorrect changes to stick is a multi-step process. Under File, Info, choose Compact and Repair Database. Then go back to File Options, Current Database, uncheck Track Name Autocorrect Info, save the options, and Compact and Repair Database again. First, we will import Table Definitions only to make modifications to the structure. On the External Data ribbon, Click the Access icon and browse to the desktop database with the tables that you want. In the Import Objects dialog box, click the Options button on the Tables tab. In the Import Tables option group, select Definition Only. We do not want the data yet. In the Import options, clear Relationships, since that is what we are redefining. Select the tables you wish to import and click OK. While the Desktop Contacts database you can download free has about a hundred tables, I'm only going to put some of them on the web. Access Web Databases can complement Desktop Databases because you can link to its tables. I do the import process again to get definition and data for state and country names and abbreviations. These tables are used for lookup lists. On this relationships diagram, you can see that the CID field is the main key field. In the contacts table, CID is a primary key. In related tables, CID is a foreign key with data type of long integer. The foreign key fields need to be changed to lookups so that relationships can be understood by the web converter. The new database now has all the table definitions, but no relationships. Go to the design view of each table. Change foreign key fields to lookup fields by deleting and recreating them by selecting lookup for the data type. In the lookup wizard, Select the table or query, the fields you want in the order you want them displayed, and how you want the list sorted. I unchecked Hide Key because I want to see real values as I move the data. This has undesirable consequences for views in the web app later on, so this will be changed. 
I could set the column widths by dragging column heading borders, but I prefer to precisely set the widths myself, which I will do in a moment. On the last screen of the Lookup Wizard, check Enable Data Integrity. Checking this box in the wizard is what creates the relationship. Click the Finish button and Yes to save. The Lookup tab in the lower pane now displays several more properties. I only needed the wizard to set up the field for the database, and now I will change what the wizard saved. The row source is where the data comes from. In the wizard, I selected two fields, the ID, which is called CID, and the main name of the contact. I click on the Builder button, dot, 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 for the row source, which takes me to the Query Designer. Instead of the display column showing the main name only, I'm going to create a calculated field called Full Name. The sort order will be Main Name, then Name A, which is the first column name for a human in this database. Since the wizard did not fill the field description, I will fill it since this will be displayed as status bar text. Remember when I did not drag the columns to different widths in the lookup wizard? That is because I will set the column widths here to be 1 inch semicolon 2.5 inches. Each value is delimited with semicolon. You do not have to type the inch symbol. If you use centimeters or another unit, you can convert the numbers appropriately or type the inch mark or IN. The list width is the sum of the column widths plus 0.2 inches to allow for a scroll bar. Set limit to list to yes. To save time, I copy this field definition and pasted it into other tables. I found out, however, that relationships were not created when I copied the CID lookup field to other table definitions. Now I create a test record in the contacts table to test the lookup. In the addresses table, CID has a combo box showing records from the contacts table. I resize the window for the addresses table and also open and resize the window for the contacts table. I also change the suffix and add a title for the contact. The changes are reflected when the CID list is dropped in the addresses table. To see the equation that constructs the full name, go to the Design view of the table, select the Lookup field, select the Row Source property on the Lookup tab in the lower pane, then click the Builder button or press Ctrl F2. In the Query Designer, click in the Calculated field and press Shift F2 to open the Zoom box. I modify the equation to put Nickname in parentheses if it is filled, Expressions within parentheses are concatenated using plus, so everything will be ignored in the parentheses if anything in the parentheses is null. Ampersands are then used to concatenate the different parts. In web databases, plus must always be used. In web databases, use the coalesce function to handle null issues and conversion functions to concatenate numbers and dates to strings. Click the datasheet view icon to see the results. The nickname J is shown in parentheses. If there was no nickname, the parentheses would not display either. After I copied and pasted the CID field to all the other tables that needed it, I found out that relationships were not created. I then discovered that relationships are created for lookup fields by the wizard when you check Enable Data Integrity. But because I copied and pasted and didn't use the wizard, the relationships weren't created. I didn't discover this until I'd already moved data. Perhaps relationships created on the diagram are imported into web databases, as long as the fields are lookup fields. When I started, however, I didn't think to try this. Each of the related contact information tables also has a types table. An email type might be personal or business. A phone type might be mobile, home, fax, or work. 
An address type might be residence, business, mailing, or billing. In the addresses table, the type is a foreign key. The choices for type have a primary key in the address types table, which is the row source for the lookup field in the address table. Just like the foreign key contact IDs were changed, the foreign keys for types will be recreated. In the design view of the address table, I delete the old type ID and begin creating a new field. I type a field name and then choose lookup wizard for the data type. The types tables each just have two relevant fields, the primary key, which is an auto number, and the text field that describes the type. Checking Enable Data Integrity in the last dialog box of the wizard is what triggers the relationship to be created when you click Finish. I change the column widths, list width, and limit to list. When I switch to data sheet, there are no choices for type. That is because the tables were brought in with definition only. Oops! I do want the data in these tables. I filter the navigation pane for all tables with TY in the name. There they are. I click the first types table, shift click the last one, and press the delete key. I launch the import wizard again by clicking the access icon on the external data ribbon. I choose the tables. The default is definition and data. These tables do not have relationships to each other, so it does not matter if relationships is checked or cleared. I finish the wizard and the new tables are in. The address table now has choices for types. However, we need two things, the lookup field and the relationship, which needs to be created. I make the type ID field again. Remember, I am showing you my mistakes to keep you from making the same ones. You'll make different mistakes, or maybe you won't make any at all. In the wizard, the dialog box where I can choose the ID to show or hide and set column widths now shows sample data from my table and my address type lookup field will have choices. I go through each table with the foreign key to a types table delete the foreign key, and recreate it using the lookup wizard. Email address type, list type, list member type, phone type, web type. I have speeded this up in case you want to pause and look at the screens. Everything is probably flashing too fast for you to consciously absorb it. The contacts table has a self-join to itself so a parent contact can be specified. This lets you identify the company that someone works for, as well as the head of a household. My personal naming convention for self-joins to a parent record in the same table is to put an underscore at the end of the primary key field name. I like to put a main table on the relationships diagram by dragging it from the navigation pane. I then stretch the field list, right-click, and choose Show Direct. This shows me tables directly related to the Contacts table. This is an easy way to see self-joins, too. When you're done with Contacts, click Show Direct on a related table. Repeat the process until the diagram is as you like it. Click All Relationships on the Design ribbon of Relationship Tools to get access to show everything when you think you're done. Now that the new database has tables and relationships linked to the tables with data, position the Link Tables dialog box so you can see the list of tables in the new database and in the database you are linking to. Because the tables are named the same, Access puts a 1 on the end of the linked table names. The navigation pane also displays a datasheet icon with an arrow so you can see that the table is linked. Use append queries to copy data from the tables with the one on the end to the resident tables. I start with categories, since looking at my relationships diagram 
the categories table needs to come first. Each contact has a category, and until the cat IDs are created, they can't be stored in the contacts table with referential integrity. To show the structure of the table I am appending to, to make it easier to pick fields, I temporarily show it. In this case, the tables have the same structure. This, however, is not always the case. Append queries are the only way to create auto number values, which is why we are using them. The primary key in most of the desktop tables is an auto number. Web tables must have an auto number primary key. After assigning each field in the source table to a destination field in the append to cell, delete the temporary field list by clicking on it and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. To run the query, click the run button on the query tools design ribbon. Open the category table and verify that data is there. Go back to the query design. Delete the Categories field list from the upper pane and drag the Contact 1 table from the Navigation pane to the Query Designer. Right-click on a blank area of the query and change the query type to Append Query. In the field list, click on the first field, scroll to the bottom, and Shift-click the last field. Click on the selected fields and drag the selection to the first column of the grid. When you let go of the mouse, the grid displays each field in a separate column and fills the append to cell when the field names are the same. To actually copy the data, run the query. Because a sample record was created in the contacts table in the new database, whoever was CID equals 1 can't be imported because there already is a CID of 1. That is okay in this case, since the data is made up anyway. I could have deleted the sample record if this was real data. In the same way, data is appended from each of the tables related to contacts. Email addresses, phone numbers, websites, lists, list members, and addresses. There's a table in the back end that I forgot to get the structure of. It is called C underscore CTC cat and is a cross-reference table for contacts and categories. The category stored in the contacts table is the main category, but many contacts have more than one role. For instance, perhaps you have suppliers that are also customers. Now I open each table to verify that it has data. I sort the navigation pane objects by name by right-clicking the navigation pane header and choosing Sort by Name. If your search bar isn't showing, press Ctrl F in the navigation pane to turn the search bar on. Type 1 into the search box to find all the tables with a 1 in the name. There they are. I click on the first one, shift-click the last one, and press Delete. Now to sort out the relationships diagram. I collapse the ribbon and collapse the navigation pane to make more space for working on the diagram. I rearrange all the tables to flow as data must be entered, with the one side of the relationship on the left and the many side on the right. I also resize the field lists to show more fields. Since all the tables have the same tracking fields at the bottom, I do not show them for every table to save space on the diagram. I see some of the tables are missing relationships. Here is where I didn't think to just drag them and see if the database would still move up to the web. The CID fields I copied did not get relationships set. I renamed the old CID field to CID1 and create a new CID field using the lookup wizard. I then modify the properties filled by the wizard. I do the same process on the other tables without a relationship to CID. List members, email addresses, and phone numbers. I then rearrange the relationships diagram again. 
the contacts table has a self joined to itself for the parent contact. This must also be changed to a lookup field. Access creates another copy of the contacts table on the relationship diagram so that the relationship can be displayed. I move the contacts copy table above the contacts table and size the field list to display the primary key field. I rearrange the diagram and fields in the tables until I'm happy with the way that it looks. Since the data was appended before the relationships diagram was checked, which shouldn't have been done, data in the lookup fields that were just defined must be updated. Use update queries. Create a new query for the contacts table. Put CID underscore and CID underscore one on the grid. The field with the one on the end is the one with the data. On the query tools design ribbon, click update in the query type group. Last time we used the right click shortcut menu. The grid changes to show an update to row. Copy the field name for CID underscore one. In the update to cell under CID type open square bracket, then paste the copied field name and type close square bracket since field names are delimited with square brackets. The only reason the CID1 field is on the grid is to copy the field name. Because there is nothing in the update2 cell below it, nothing will be done. Run the update query by clicking the Run button on the Design ribbon. Open the Contacts table. To see that Brad Henry works for A&M Surplus, click the drop-down arrow in the CID underscore field. On a former view, this field would use a control that shows the name instead of the number. Now that information from the CID underscore one field has been moved to the CID underscore lookup field, go to the design view of contacts and delete the CID underscore one field. The update query does not need to be saved since it won't need to be run again. In the query design, remove the contact field list and drag in another table to update. Next, we will update CID in the phones table to CID1. Verify the data is there, then delete the CID1 field. In the query design, drag the email address table in and change the table name for the CID field on the grid to come from the email addresses table instead of the phones table. Then delete the phones field list from the top pane of the query. Run the query, verify the data got changed, and delete the old field. Similarly, run an update query on the rest of the new lookup fields that need values. Had the relationships been checked before the data was appended, time could have been saved, and these update queries would not be necessary. Our tables are now ready to move to the web. To create a new custom access app, click the File menu and choose New. Blank database and template icons will be displayed. Click the icon captioned as Custom Web App. Another way to create a new access app is from the Office 365 Admin Center. Sign in to your Office 365 or other hosting account. For Office 365, you can go to login.microsoftonline.com. Site contents show My Applications and Let Me Create New Apps. Click Add an App. First, you will see templates you can start with. I generally prefer to create databases from scratch. Scroll to the end of the templates and click on Access App. I am naming this app Contact Web Blank. I'm naming this app Contact Web Blank since I intend to import tables created on the desktop without contact information, only lookup information. The example I showed you had records, but I deleted them so you could easily use this yourself. SharePoint creates my database and displays a new icon on my site contents page. Simply click the new icon to begin designing your application. To create tables from scratch, click the Add a new blank table link on the right. 
In this case, I'm going to click the Access icon to import tables from an Access desktop database. I browse to the blank database I prepared. I select all the tables and click OK. As each table is imported, it shows up in the table selector on the left, behind the Import Objects dialog box. With foresight, I could have moved the Import Objects dialog box to the right before clicking OK. Once all the tables are imported, the Get External Data Wizard tells you that all objects were imported successfully, if they were. On the left, see the table selector. When the tables were imported, Access automatically created a datasheet view and list view for every table. We are currently looking at a datasheet view of the web types table. To see the data, you must launch the app. To modify the view, click the Edit button in the middle of the design surface. The advantage of using the datasheet view instead of opening the table directly is that views can be automated with macros. The selected table appears in blue in the table selector. The star icon in front of each table can be changed. On the right, you can choose views of the table. If you click on another table in the table selector, you will see its views on the right. Remember, these views were created automatically. All I did was import tables. To get connection information so that you can link from other applications, click the File menu and choose Info. There you will see the URL for your website, the SQL Server name, and the SQL Server database name. Click the Create Reports icon to create a desktop access database with connections to your linked data where you can define reports and more. The Manage icon lets you set permissions for your database. To modify a view, click on the table in the Table Selector and then on the Edit button for the desired view. Once a table view is changed, it will not automatically be updated when changes are made to the structure of the underlying table. I didn't change anything in the view. I now look at the design view of the contacts table. In desktop databases, I often set fields to an integer data type instead of yes, no, based on Alan Brown's recommendations. That is why is active is set to an integer. I will now change the data type of is active to yes, no, and delete the fields that aren't needed. When I save the table and look at the list view again, I see it has changed. Is active is now a checkbox, and the deleted fields are gone. Since all web tables must have an auto number ID, I add one to the countries table. This table is used as a lookup to store the country abbreviation. I get rid of more fields I don't need right now. Since I often import data into tables, I sometimes add import ID. I also have fields I don't need in these structures to synchronize data in desktop databases. In the Lists table, I'm going to add a field for the contact who is the owner or manager of the list for when that is applicable. Perhaps the list is a club I belong to, and I want to quickly contact them. I create the field below the other fields since I can move it later. This will be a lookup field to the contacts table. The CID underscore LI field I created has an index because it has a relationship. Now I click on the record selector, let go, then drag the field by its record selector to the position where I want it to go. I save the table and close it. My view now has an autocomplete control for the list owner. Because, however, I specified for the ID field to show in the properties of the table, the primary display field is also set to ID. The only way I found to change this was to redefine the field, which will be done later. I have the same problem with all the foreign key fields. I also change is active in the list member table to a checkbox, make the is active change to other tables, and delete unnecessary fields.
Because a web database does not have a relationships diagram, and it's useful to document relationships, you can use a query. I make a new query and add all the tables. Move the mouse to the divider between the upper and lower panes. Click and drag to give more space to the top. Start by arranging all the tables so that the one side of the relationship is on the left and the many side of the relationship is on the right. As you move field lists, you size them to show what is necessary. When you are done, make a screenshot to document the relationships. Save the query as Q relationship. In Access 2013, a saved query must have at least one field on the grid. It doesn't matter which field you put on the grid, as this query will only be opened in Design View to simulate the relationships diagram in desktop databases. Unlike 2010, the query designer does not save the table layout, so don't forget to take a screenshot. When you press the print screen key on your keyboard, a screenshot is put on the Windows clipboard. You can then paste into a Word document, PowerPoint presentation, or other application to crop, change colors, and print. Now that my application is on the web, I copy the URL to share with others and so I can go back faster myself. In the browser, when looking at my SharePoint team site, I can see my new database in the recent apps. I can see my database in site contents, and I have a link to the database so I can share with others. In May, I was one of the presenters for the Microsoft MVP Virtual Conference. The topic was using access on the web. My co-presenters were Julian Kirkness, Brent Spaulding, and a special appearance by Patrick Wood. A recording of the presentation is on channel9.msdn.com. Links to the presentation resources are on Pat's site, www.gainingaccess.net. As always, clickable links are in the video description. Web databases give us additional power that we should take advantage of. I hope you will try building an access app. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we'll all get better.